Welcome to another video with Steve Douglas on Wildcatters TV. Steve shares his tips, tricks, and methods, and in his own way, makes you feel like you're spending a day on the boat with him. Ride along with Steve and take your catfishing skills to the next level. We'd like to thank our sponsors, XL Boats, Monster Rod Holders. Monster Rod Holders are monster strong. Tangling with Catfish Rod. Must add hooks, the best selling hook on the planet. Fat Boy Custom Rods. Now, here's the catfish dude, Steve Dutton. Okay, folks, we're going to do a little night fishing this evening on Taylorsville Lake here in Kentucky. Uh, they put some blues in here a few years back, uh, maybe 10 years back, and it looks like they're um, getting reports of them starting to grow a little bit, but we're going to come out here and just try it. I haven't fished this lake in probably 10 years, uh, but it's got a definite thermal climb in it at about 20 foot, so we're going to have to fish anywhere we do fish. We're going to have to fish above that thermal climb. Uh, to be able to catch any fish. Taylorsville is a deep lake uh, and in the winter time, I haven't fished it in the winter time, but I'd say it would be good. It's got some 70 foot water in it. It's just a, the Salt River has been dammed up is what it, what it pretty much is. It's a flood control reservoir, I do believe, uh, but it's got a definite thermal climb in it and we need to fish above that thermal climb. For you guys who are not familiar with the thermal climb, uh, the oxygen below this level as you can see all this clutter there's no oxygen from here down all your oxygen is from here up and the fish will stay in that vicinity uh, also the thermal climb will cause what they call a, uh, a turnover in the fall it's where all the unoxygenated water kind of just flips with the oxygenated water um, and it just kind of turns the, the water real mucky coffee brown nasty uh, fish can still be caught in the turnover like that, but they just slow down for that brief amount of time until the, the water kind of straightens back up. But it is deep lake. I'd say I'm going to come over this winter and try to target some some uh, better areas. But right now, my only options are about 20 foot up to the top is all I can fish. Uh, we'll be wasting our time if we go any further. So. So what we're going to do is run up the back of one of these creeks and grab some shad. We're probably going to fish some live shad around some standing timber um, and fish some flats this evening. So stay tuned. Let's go catch some bait. All right, guys. Apparently Taylorville had a real good hatch this year because there's just millions of just small, small uh, shad that actually comes through my net see here they're so small they get stuck in a net but underneath of these guys that you see on the surface uh, you're gonna find some of the bigger bigger shad swimming under so let it sink and don't throw directly on top of those little ones because the big ones will be there too A couple more big ones. That's just the right size. Yeah, see, I'm gonna have to work for this bait tonight. Alright, a couple more throws. Get a couple dozen pieces of bait, and we'll go fishing. Mother load, there we go guys, the mother load, them some big nice ones and they're right on that point, right on the rocky point, let me uh, there's what we're after, four shizzles. Yeah, 
guys, I'm gonna straighten my net up. So I ain't tripping all over it. And we're gonna go catfishing. All right, guys, I'm using live shad this evening, and the way I'm gonna hook it, I'm using just a uh, regular circle hook, mustad circle hook, and I'm just gonna hook it back in the dorsal fin somewhat. And he's gonna go crazy. When you're in a situation where you don't have a lot of current, that's the way I like to hook my shad. Look at him wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Like I said before, we have a thermal climb, so I'm gonna only drop this thing down about 15 foot to determine how far down he is. Stick that bait right underneath of it. You can see it coming up on my screen right now. Raise him up and drop him down. So see, I know he's right at about 15 foot right there and I'm gonna leave him at about 15. And he's going to go out of the picture because he won't be under that cone any longer, but at least I know that he's in the proper depth. Here's what a thermocline looks like on a regular 2D sonar. And this is what it looks like on a down imaging. You can see a big ball of shad right here. It looks like there might be some bigger fish in amongst feeding them, feeding on them. But you notice almost all the life. First fish of the day. It's a little blue. Oh, he's nice. Nice little blue. Feeling you get to actually feel the the fish fight. Now we won't have to worry. We won't have to worry about letting them decompress because they're up in the water column. There's our first little catfish out of uh, Taylorsville Lake. Not so bad, but that ain't what we're looking for. We've been told that there's 30s and 40s over here, and that's what we're going to look for tonight. But action's action, guys, and I'm going to take him. Okay, guys, that was about an hour of drifting. We managed one five pound or four pound, something, something like that, but. Uh, we're gonna go anchor up on a shallow flat that is above the thermocline and uh, throw some rods out for a little while before it gets dark to see if we can uh, locate anything up on the flat. Okay, here's what the thermocline looks like on the down scan. We can do several different pallets and you can still see it in that area there. And you fishing around a thermocline, you need to be up above that bad boy. <laughs> 